Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Friendly Schools. My name is Bethany and today your assembly is going to be all about hedgehogs and how you can help them. A little bit about me, I love hedgehogs. Hedgehogs are my favourite animal. This hedgehog I'm holding is called Holly. Holly was found alone as a tiny baby hedgehog in the middle of December, in the middle of winter. And I helped her get bigger so that she could go back into the wild. I hope that after this assembly, you will love hedgehogs as much as I do. So in your head, what do you know about hedgehogs? I'll give you a few seconds to have a think. It could be, what do they look like? What do they do? Have a really, really good think. <clears throat> so if you thought of any of these, then give yourself a pat on the back. But if you didn't think of any, please don't worry, because hopefully by the end of the assembly, you will know about all things hedgehogs. So what is a hedgehog? This animal in the circle is a wild hedgehog that we find in our gardens and our parks, woodlands and countryside. It looks like this on the left. They're usually brown and prickly and they're a wild animal. So they're not a, pre a pet animal. You don't keep them as pets in our houses. That's not allowed as they live in the wild. But there is a type of hedgehog that you can keep as a pet, and that's this one on the right. They are called an African pygmy hedgehog. They look really different as they are quite pale in colour and their fur is usually white. They are really cute, but actually what I really love is the wild hedgehog, the one that's in our gardens and parks. So here you can see a picture of a hedgehog, a wild hedgehog curled up into a prickly ball. That's what they do when they are feeling a little bit scared. So what else is a hedgehog? A hedgehog is an animal called a mammal. So a mammal is an animal with warm blood, a backbone or a spine. They've got hair or fur and in the hedgehog's case they have prickles too. Mammals also produce milk to feed their babies and when they do have babies they're live babies. So they're not born in eggs. So that's what makes a mammal. And a hedgehog is a kind of mammal, just like us humans are. So have a little listen to see what a hedgehog sounds like. Hopefully you can hear that. They're really great and sometimes you will hear them at night huffing and puffing in your garden. They sound like a little steam train. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> so what does a hedgehog look like? They are really great. They've got long noses which are used to sniff around. They curl into a ball when they are feeling scared. They've actually got spikes on their backs but their belly is furry which is very, very sweet. The face and their legs are also furry. And the hedgehogs, hedgehogs' babies look like this. The babies are called hoglets and they're born really tiny. They're completely blind and they are pink. So they look much different to the adult hedgehog, the bigger hedgehog. They do have a little tail at the back of their body as well, as you can see in the photograph there. So they are very cute looking animals, but actually they are really quite great because they have this fabulous prickly defence on their backs. And that prickly defence is from things that might want to eat them. Things like predators such as dogs, foxes and maybe even badgers. Here's a little video of what a hedgehog looks like when they are eating and drinking. See that one is having a drink of water and the other one is having some biscuits. You can see the fairy faces too to see what they really look like along with the prickles along their backs. They're really beautiful creatures. Just see if this video plays. There's no sound, so don't worry about that if you can't hear it.
sweet, aren't they? So we just saw a video of how a hedgehog look, but what do they behave like? Some of you may know this, but when it gets really cold and there's not a lot of food around, hedgehogs do something quite interesting and it's called hibernation. So when it gets very cold, hedgehogs build themselves a nest of leaves underneath a hedge or a log pile and they curl up into a tight spiky ball and sleep through the winter months because otherwise they wouldn't be able to survive if they didn't have that long sleep. So remember that word, hibernation. Now, hedgehogs can be quite grumpy as well. So have a little look at this video because it shows just how grumpy hedgehogs are. Did you see that? There were two hedgehogs and one of them pushed his friend into the ball. I wouldn't recommend that you do that to your friends. We shouldn't do that as people. But hedgehogs can be quite grumpy with each other in the wild. Hedgehogs are also really interesting because we don't see them out during the daytime. They are active and they move around at night. And there is a special word for this and that word is nocturnal. So animals that are out at night are nocturnal animals. It's very rare to see them out during the daytime as usually this can mean that they are very poorly. So what hedgehogs do during the day? They sleep. And here is a lovely video of a hedgehog having a little sleep in its nest. So right now, while we're at school, work and living our lives during the daytime, all hedgehogs should be tucked up and asleep in their nests. And more often than not, they don't wake up until we go to bed. So it's the opposite of how we live, which I think is really interesting. And it's nice to be able to see one having a little sleep, tucked up in its bed or in its hedgehog house. And I just wanted to talk about that for a second and where hedgehogs live. So we live in houses, apartments or flats, don't we? Something that looks a little bit like this. And what we do in those houses is we live in them. We sleep in them, we eat in them, we play in them, we do our homework in them, all of those kinds of things. So for us as humans, our house is what we might call our habitat. It's where we do all of those things we need to do to survive. But what about hedgehogs? What is their house? What is their habitat? Well, actually, a hedgehog's favourite habitats are things like woodlands, hedges and the countryside. We also find them in our gardens as well. So in our gardens at home or at school. So we'll find them in places like this. Flower beds, long grass, lovely leaf piles, fabulous log piles. All of these are really great places for hedgehogs to live and they are really good habitats. Now we can even help hedgehogs by giving them little houses. They look like these. You can build them or buy them and hedgehogs will sleep in them. In fact, we just saw a video of one asleep in one of these little hedgehog houses. So we can help by giving them some places to sleep. So we've just learned about where they live, but what do they eat? Now you might find this a little bit gross. I don't find it gross. I find it really interesting. Although it's not what we would like to eat, hedgehogs eat mostly bugs. So they eat insects and creepy crawlies, things like beetles, earthworms, caterpillars, and sometimes slugs. We wouldn't want to eat those things, but hedgehogs love them. But they can eat other things as well. So this photograph shows a hedgehog eating a frog, and some people have even seen them eat snakes. So they eat some really weird stuff. Hedgehogs are actually a kind of animal that eats living animals and plants as well. There is a special word for this and that word is omnivore. So a hedgehog is an omnivore and they eat lots of different things. They also eat pet food, mainly cat food, but they will eat dog food too. They love it. 
we saw a video of one eating some kitten biscuits earlier and here is a photo of one eating some wet cat food. They really love pet food and it's so good for them too. But something that is not good for hedgehogs is milk and bread. We should never, ever give hedgehogs milk or bread because those two things can make hedgehogs really, really poorly. So please don't give any of your visiting hedgehogs anything with milk or bread in. So we know where hedgehogs need to live, we know what they need to eat, but what else do hedgehogs need to survive? Well, they need water, just like we need water. They need to be able to go and have a drink. If we are thirsty, we can go and make ourselves a drink of water, but hedgehogs can't do that, can they? They need to drink water that is outside for them. So we need to leave shallow bowls of water in places where they can get to them so they can go and have a drink. They also need to have little entry holes into our gardens. We call these hedgehog holes. You can see the sort of hedgehog shaped hole in the bottom of the fence there on the left. Hedgehogs really need those little places to get into our gardens. So it might be a gap under your gate or a hole that you might have made at the bottom of your fence with an adult present. And if you can make enough of these on your street, then you can get what's called a hedgehog highway. A bit, of, a bit like a long network of hedgehog holes, or like a lot of streets, but for hedgehogs that allow them to move through our gardens. So those are a couple of things that hedgehogs need to survive. But how do we know that they are nearby? So if you're wondering whether a hedgehog has come to visit the school or your garden, you can look out for some of these clues. You can look out for lost spines or spikes. You can look out for their droppings or poos. I know they're super gross, aren't they? <laughs> you can look for their footprints. And actually, we have a really fun activity for you and your teachers based on hedgehog tunnels. And you can maybe get some hedgehog footprints in your school. So loads of great ways to be on the lookout for hedgehogs. This is what a footprint tunnel looks like, by the way, teachers. They are really fab. And if a hedgehog comes by, they will wander in and leave the little footprints behind. Super clever. Hopefully this will play for you. No, it doesn't. That's unfortunate. It comes through the middle of that tunnel and walk out the other end. Where the bit is in the middle, that's what they'll go for. The reason why we care about hedgehogs is because they are very, very important. And we love them and they are very cute. But they are now at risk of extinction. Hedgehog numbers are going down very quickly. And what that means is that they are now at risk of becoming extinct. The dinosaurs went extinct, didn't they? That means that there are none left. They've gone forever. I would hate to see a day where hedgehogs have gone and there are none left and we can't get them back. And that is what they're at risk of at the moment. So we're very, very worried about hedgehogs and we need to do something about it. And these are the reasons why we need to help them. Hedgehogs get hurt on the roads, they get trapped in litter, they get poisoned, they get trapped in bonfires, but most importantly, they are, their habitats are being destroyed. So all of these threats and problems are really the cause of hedgehogs heading towards extinction. So that's really, really sad and worrying, isn't it? That hedgehogs could be gone forever. But don't think there's nothing you can do because there are so many things that you can do. You can be a hedgehog hero and that's really what I'm here to try and get you to be. So we need you to be doing all the things that you can to help hedgehogs. Whether that's looking out for hedgehog dangers at your school and telling your teachers about it. It could be litter, it could be a poorly hedgehog, it could be that you're telling your parents, carers or neighbours about how they can help hedgehogs. You could even write a letter to ask them for help. Or you could be making habitats for hedgehogs at school or at home, like flower beds and log piles. Or perhaps you could be wearing gloves and picking up litter to make sure that hedgehogs don't get trapped in it. You could take the hedgehog pledge. So every single one of you could take a pledge to do one action to help hedgehogs that would really, really help them. Have a think about what that might be. And if you do enough of these actions, your 
your school actually has a chance of becoming a hedgehog friendly school and getting an award. And that's what you've been working on this past year. So you can be a hedgehog hero at school, but you can also be a hedgehog hero at home. Now remember, hedgehogs need our help. We don't want them to go extinct. We've got to give them all the help we can. And that might be by making log piles or hedgehog houses, keeping an eye out for poly hedgehogs that are out during the day. It might be by making a hedgehog hole or giving them some water to drink from. And really just being kind to animals in general is so, so important. Hedgehogs and other wildlife really, really need our help. And we have to be that help for these animals. So I hope that you have learned that hedgehogs really deserve our help and that I've convinced you to become hedgehog heroes. So after this assembly, we're going to send your teachers some fun activities, perhaps for you to do before the end of the day, if there is time, or maybe even later in the week. We've got some great colouring in, we've got a hedgehog facts file, a word search, a letter home template, so loads of really great activities to follow up on. Thank you so, so very much for listening. And I hope that I've convinced you that hedgehogs really need our help. And for all of you to become hedgehog heroes, I think that all of you are a fabulous addition to our Hedgehog Friendly Schools campaign. And we look forward to seeing all of your work towards your award and doing your bit for hedgehogs. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for coming. <laughs>